My name is Jeff Satan, right? This is the Live Tuesday Show, and I am amped up, as always, coming back at you each and every week. Um, Tuesday, live at 12.05, right on the Selling Coaching fan page. Uh, for those of you who don't get to watch live or are unable to, I always record these shows, and I put them in my university on my website, sellingcoaching.com. So check out the university, and then right on the homepage, also in the university page, but right on the homepage as well, um, I have a great resource for you. It is the ultimate start guide for new coaches. It's an audio and PDF resource. So definitely go ahead and check that out. Enter your name and email. That puts you in my email community as well. And I want you to be in my email community. Very important. It's us stay connected. But I want to teach you how to use email. And I want you to be a part of it so you can experience that as well. Whether you end up uh, mentor coaching with me or not, you can start to utilize that and develop that into your own uh, use because email is so important um, in terms of growing our audience. We've got to stay in communication with our people. Um, and that brings me to uh, mentor coaching. If you're in a position where you know you require some help, stop struggling. Stop struggling on your own. Um, when I started back in 2003, 2004 is when I really started to go full time. My coaching business, one of the best things I did in late 04, 05 was when I hired my first mentor coach. I wouldn't be here today literally if I didn't hire him and then several others along the way. So stop struggling. If you're considering or know you need some help like that, go to the work with me page at sellingcoaching.com. Fill out the form at the bottom. That will come to me. I will call you and let's create a conversation. And there's no pressure there. It's just more of like, let's just, let's be honest about where you're at and maybe how I can assist you and we can decide on the best path. But right now, we got people tuning in live, so it's great to have people tuning in live. And we're going to launch this show, and today we're talking about how to write your marketing copy, copy and we're going to talk about some simple tips. And when it comes to marketing, uh, it, it can seem very overwhelming. And as we come out as new coaches, or what, no matter how long you've been in the game before, even in business in general, um, people think like, oh my God, marketing and selling, right? Those are like the big words, like oh my God, well, how am I going to sell? I don't know how to sell. I'm not a salesperson. I don't want to be a salesperson. And then marketing is, and how do I market myself? What do I say? And, and, I, and I talk with coaches all the time and they're like, oh, I'm hiring you know, a marketing consultant or a, a, a copywriter. You know? And so I'm not saying don't do that. But like, great, if you want to get an expert in, in, uh, in copywriting and things like that, go for it. But what I'm here to do is, is to say like, well, let's start to look at what marketing really is and how it works not just in general, because there's all different types of marketing. When I say different types of marketing, um, for different businesses, different marketing strategies work better. Uh, so uh, just on a, a broad perspective, right? You'll go to Times Square and you'll see like a big, big, huge banner right in Times Square, right? And it's just like the Nike symbol. It's just got the Nike swoosh that says like, just do it, right? Or you see like, you know, and a big thing of M&Ms, like a picture of an M&M, right? So brands like that, um, you see commercials for Pepsi and Coke, and, and, and you're watching these commercials in the, like for the Super Bowl, and they're paying millions of dollars for a 30-second ad, right? And it's just like this ridiculous ad of like horses drinking from a fountain, and next thing you know, like what is this ad for? And like, oh, it's for Budweiser, right? So large companies marketing, it's more brand awareness, right? Everyone knows Nike and, and Coca-Cola, right? So they're just putting it in your face and keeping it in front of your face so the next time you're in a grocery store or you're, you get a craving for something, it's like, I'm going to buy M&Ms, right? Because you just saw a commercial for it. And next thing you're at the supermarket store and you're sitting there waiting and you see some M&Ms and it just, that's how it works. And you see a Coke there in the little cooler and you're like, I'm going to buy a Coke. I'm going to buy some M&Ms. Very healthy choice, right? Either way, the point is, is that's how that type of marketing works, right? And I'm not going to go through all different types of companies, right? But in terms of coaching, I've been doing coaching long enough. Um, and, and in this business to know how coaching marketing works. And so I want to simplify this for you today. And this is going to be this long show on making it complicated. It's just like what I want you to do, I'll start off with a general uh, tip and then I'll kind of elaborate on it a little bit from there, is when it comes to marketing, we got to keep things straightforward, simple, and the best word I can give you is literal. I want you to be literal with your marketing. Meaning I want you to say, exactly what it is that this first if you if it's up, applicable who is it for but then more specifically what is it what benefit or what outcome is this person or people gonna get if they buy watch tune in listen etc like so today's today's show is how to write your marketing copy 
simple tips, right? So if, if you're reading this, like you're, you're a selling coaching fan, you're, you're with me, and not everyone was tuning into the show or would watch this video, well, how would they know if they wanted to invest their time to watch this show? Well, the title, and then ultimately the title is going to lead into the description. And if that easily identifies to them, like, oh my God, this is something I want to learn more about, guess what? That's when they invest their time, right? So this is, um, marketing is selling your product, your service, your show, your call, your, your course, or whatever it is, right? So it's going to come down to a title and a brief description. And in that title and brief description, I want you to be uh, brief, simple, but more importantly, literal, right? So what I, what, and here's the thing is I don't want you to be, I don't want you to be creative. <laughs> yes, I'm saying that don't be creative. When I say don't be creative, um, people don't understand cleverness and creativity sometimes when you're talking about it. So puns, play on words, um, cute, funny ways of saying things. Um, people don't get that stuff. It doesn't mean that they won't get it. And it, it, so don't think that. It just means that even if they do get it, do they truly understand what it is that you're offering? So some of the mentoring clients right now and a couple of clients right now, I'm helping them create like their first six week course or whatever. And, um, and so they're, I'm helping them with the marketing of it and the copy as well as what I do as a mentor coach. And so they're giving me kind of their first drafts. And so I, I, I'm coming at it and I'm like, well, I read this and I have no idea what this is, right? And, and I'm like, well, so what is this for? And, you know, manifest your destiny or, you know, the seventh level um, energy to fulfill, uh, creating a fulfilling life. And it's just like, what does that even mean, right? And, and maybe you and I might know what that means in, in the coaching world, but you have to think about it from a, pers a, per a person who doesn't know anything about what we know about, right? They're, they're, it's an uneducated, when I say uneducated, I'm not saying people are uneducated. I'm saying from a, from a personal development standpoint, from a level of consciousness standpoint, not everybody, but the average person is, is not, they're, they're uneducated in that awareness piece and that personal development piece and all like energy. What does energy mean? It's like an energy bar. It means I'm tired or I have energy. I drink coffee and I have energy. Okay. But energy for us means something different, you know? Um, and so those general froofy words, that creativity, you, you can't, you can't go there with people because they don't know what that is or, or even if they know what it is, it, what does it even mean to them, right? So we got to think about what's a, what's a final outcome? So like a final outcome of, of this show as an example is you're going to get some tips on how to write your marketing copy and you're going to leave here knowing um, some very straightforward things that you can become better at writing your marketing and not feel like maybe you have to hire someone to do that for you or you can feel more confident in it. That's all. That's how it is. And you should get that from the description and, and obviously the title of that. Right, so whatever you're doing, I don't. Want, it doesn't matter if it's your website and you come there, like go to sellingcoaching.com, and you see a, a headline. It's helping coaches transition to a full-time business. There should be no question, you know, whether that's for you or not. Right, meaning it's like you go there and it's like if you're a coach and you're looking to do this full-time, okay, you're like, all right, this this is interesting to me. If it, if it's not, then you go away. That's what we want, people. So the more general, the more vague we are, the more creative and and. I don't know, whatever we're going to talk about there, whatever we want to label that as, is um, people are just unsure and they don't know whether they want to move forward or not. So be straightforward and literal. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go um, to my selling coaching page where my university, and I'm going to just going to read off some titles of my shows, right? And with, with my shows, I, I, like I said, I'm very straightforward with that, right? So some of the titles for my shows is um, dealing with the emotional ups and downs of entrepreneurship, what to do with your website, how to accept payment at the end of a complimentary session, Setting up and using your email list, <laughs> you know, the ins and outs of content marketing, you know, uh, let's, um, using Facebook live to get clients. Uh, let's read a couple more. I'm all, all about group coaching, right? So even that, that might be a little bit, that might be a little bit bigger, but it's about group coaching. And then if that's of interest to you, you read the description. It's like, Hey, if you thought about group coaching versus one-on-one, -on -one, this show is for you. And I kind of elaborate a little bit more about that, you know, um, the ultimate website guide. And, you know, and I can keep going on that uh, on different things. The art of following up to get paid. Um, how I began earning money as a full-time coach. What it really takes to get clients. Creating your first product or course. 
uh, to sell one-on-one -on -one group coaching versus group coaching, right? So I'm not going to go on. There's, there's, there's hundreds more, literally. Uh, but the point is with that is, is, is my, my titles are very literal and they're straightforward. And you want someone to read it and know exactly what they're getting out of this. Remember, what the title does is we're talking about copy as title and then descriptions. What that does is that allows people, it, it buys a little bit more time. And if, and if the title of something is, oh, yes, this is for me or not, or I'm interested in this or not, um, right now, that's the selling piece, right? It doesn't mean that they're not interested in copywriting as an example, but maybe right now when they read the title to this show as an example, it wasn't on the forefront of, oh, my God, I need to learn about this. But guess what? You know, maybe in a week or two down the road, all of a sudden they come across that title and they're like, oh, my God, I need to listen to that or watch this show, right? So it's, it's all about them deciding – creating a buying decision of how they want to invest their time at that given point for what that you're offering or, or and or money for what they're doing. But the copy kind of gets them to that point and gets them through that part, right? So those are some of the things in terms of your titling and your descriptions. Um, again, keeping things brief is I always like to think about um, when I'm uh, describing a show like this or something like that is, is like three to five sentences tops. And each sentence is a paragraph. So I'm not going to like write a whole clump of stuff. I'm going to write a sentence, hit return, sentence, hit return. You know, grammatically, do I, should I make a new paragraph after a sentence? I don't care about those rules because I'm, I'm more concerned about, you know, someone's, you know, looking on a smartphone, uh, you know, or, or on, on a small tablet. And I don't want them scrolling and scrolling and scrolling because at some point they're going to lose it. Like what are, what are the two or three major things you need to talk about? And that's it. So we want to be brief and straight and to the point, right? So think about words that um, the layman would understand. Like, I don't want to have to take a dictionary to figure out uh, or, or look up you know, Wikipedia what the word means. And, and, and don't think that, um, think like a child, right? You, you gotta think like, what would a child understand in terms of marketing? And so you're getting away from, what's the word, can I say more educated words? And I'm not saying like, you know, speak like a dummy, et cetera, but just, just be very straightforward with everything. That, that's, it's just the way I, I like to do it, and I found very a lot of success with that in terms of people knowing whether they want to move forward or not. So, in other words, there's no question about what it is um, that they're what they're where they're going to be investing their time, et cetera. So, let, we talk about that with courses. We talk about that. Um, we'll talk about like websites. So, same thing there. It's it's get it like I said a straight straightforward headline so they know who this is for and what what they're going what is, you're helping them with them specifically um any copy on your website as an example also that that's that's marketing like your website is your number one if you will marketing tool all the other marketing efforts we do ultimately drive traffic to our website which ultimately confirms whether this is for them or not has more education on it but then ultimately uh, has some form of lead capture in a form of our free resource, one of the first things I said on this show was, hey, go to sellingcoaching.com on the homepage. Check out my free resource, Ultimate Startup Guide for New Coaches, right? You'll see that if you're watching the recorded version of this. You're going to see, you know, my website down the bottom corner. You're going to see, you know, at certain points during um, the video, a thing pop up on the side, you know, saying, hey, here's the Ultimate Startup Guide for New Coaches, right? So I want, if they're liking this information, I want them to get more and I want them to become my, part of my audience, right? We've got to funnel people into that place where they're becoming a part of our audience. So now they're a warm audience so we can be in front of them on a regular basis through our emails, through our marketing that we're doing. And so that, that makes sure that when the timing is right for them, that they click through, that they end up reaching out to us, that they go to the Work With Me page and fill out the form at the bottom of our, our website, for example, and then ultimately, hopefully, they hire us or buy our products or services that we offer, right? Um, in terms of email copywriting, this is another big thing for people is, um, you know, writing emails. They, they're they like a lot of my clients that I'm working with, you know, it's just like, oh, they, once they get going, they're fine, but it's just kind of getting them out of the gates and writing their their weekly emails, multiple emails a week. Again, we're going to start off with at least one. Ideally, it's, let's get up to two or three, and, and hey, more if you want to do that, great. But regardless of that, you know, we get uh, we got to think about the copy itself in terms of what you're writing. Um, don't worry about uh, where you're going with it in terms of just like you got to find your style. And so don't think like, oh, I'm not a marketer, and and I have to perfectly craft these emails, and I've got to I've got to hire this this person who who has all these emails that are already pre-done, and I'm going to work off a template. I mean, that's I would say that's the worst thing you could do, 
because what's going to happen is, is it's not you. It's not your words. It's not your energy or your tone in, in, in your presentation. Your biggest differentiator in this market is you and your style. And so that's where we've got to trust ourselves. We've got to believe in ourselves and what, what, with whatever we do and however we present ourselves, is that's how it is. That's why sometimes when, when people are taking like Toastmasters for speaking or things like that, I'm not saying that's a bad thing to do. It's like, well, let's get out there and start speaking. And if you're saying too many ums and ahs and you're too hyper like me sometimes or you're too, uh, talking too fast and people can't understand you, it's like, okay, yeah, we can improve upon that. But like, let's find your style. I don't want to suppress that. I want that to start to come out. Just as the opposite of that, maybe you speak slowly. Maybe your energy just is, is, is here, more of a flat line effect. Nothing wrong with that as, as well. There's some great authors like Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, He's written some other things as well. I've, I've listened to his audio books and the guy's like so monotone and just, you know, but it's, his information is so powerful. I feel like if, if his voice is so animated, it would take away from the power of his message, right? So that, that gives him his niche, his, his unique piece in the marketplace. So you are that piece. So in terms of how you write in a style, in terms of your copy, I want that to be the same. You know, my mom's my, who reads my emails still, you know, she's more than happy to tell me when I've spelled something wrong or done something wrong grammatically or things like that or use there instead of there, T-H-E-I-R or whatever. And hopefully I don't mess that up at this point. But the point is, you know, I don't get it right all the time, but I'm okay with that. You know, should I capitalize these letters in the title or not? Who cares? You know, in, in today's day and age with texting and, and messaging and, and especially the newer generations abbreviating everything, like they can't even say catch up, it's catch. Or I don't even know, I don't even speak that language right now, but I'm going to have to learn it with my 12-year-old son. But the point is, is that, you know, I'm writing an email and I'm writing through and it's T-H-R-U, it's not spelling it out. But it's okay. If, if that's you and that's how you roll, then roll that way. And, and there's, that's the, the cool part about having a business is it's your business. You're the CEO, you're the owner. There's no one telling you what you should or shouldn't do. Yeah, you can have guidance, like I said, through a mentor and stuff like that. And there's some things that we wanna consider, right? But like, if you swear, then swear. If you don't swear, then don't swear, right? I mean, don't like be someone that you're not. So, um, well, if you swear too much, just be aware of that because some people will be turned off by that. But if that's your mojo, like I know some guys um, on online that this is, it's a giant F-bomb fest. And some people hate it, and guess what? They don't follow that person. Some people just love it because it's that guy, right? And, and he has it in his copy, and he has it when he writes his emails, and every other word's an F-bomb. But you know what? It's him, and it works. You know, so is, that, is there a book on that that talks about swearing and marketing? You know, maybe there is, but the point is is that you've got to find it be your own. So with emails, as an example, find your style. Um, here's one place. Here's one place in marketing copy where you can get clever is in your email subject line. So in anything else that you're doing with marketing, you know, on the website or things like that, um, uh, you know, ver uh, social media, uh, anything in print especially, um, we want to be literal, straightforward, brief, to the point. Um, but the one place where you can get creative is in your email subject line. So this is where, and if you follow me, that's why I said go to sellingcoaching.com. You know, get onto my, my free guide, you know, right, right from the homepage, but I want you to be my email community because I want you to see my email subject line as well um, because that's where I do get creative with that. Sometimes I'm little and I'm straightforward and I'll, I'll do a blend of it, right? So my Tuesday morning emails as a reminder for my Tuesday call, typically I'll just put the title of the call as a subject line. So the subject, um, if it's Tuesday and you're watching live, the subject line and you receive my email, it was uh, something around how to write your marketing copy, right? It was, it was very straightforward. You know, so people know like that's what that email is about. So you can be literal. That's one way of doing it. But the creative side of an email subject line from a marketing perspective is kind of playing more off of curiosity of saying like, what is this? Or, or shock factor or, or wow factor or any version of that is it's almost just like I kind of have to open the email just to see what this is about. Like my email yesterday that I sent out was this email sucks. And I was kind of talking about how my son was playing basketball for the first time. And afterwards, he's, you know, he's like, Dad, this game sucked and I sucked. You know, and the fact is he did suck because at the end of the day, he's on a new team and so forth and so on. And, and, and I said how in our business, you know, you, when you start off, you should suck. That's exactly where you should be right now. And at some point when you're not sucking anymore, you got to step it up so you do suck again because that means you're challenging yourself. And so at the end of the email, I'm like, I just came to me. I'm like, all right, this email sucks, <laughs> you know, and, and that was it. So it was clever. 
but hopefully it was a title where people are like, okay, this email sucks. Why would I want to read it? I, I just have to kind of see what this is about. And next thing you know, they're reading the whole email. That would be the hope of it, right? So that's the one place, let's say, where we can get clever and creative. Um, uh, other than that, I want you to keep everything straightforward and simple. That's my message for you today. And the best place you can do to begin practicing this, to put this into action, is by starting to do emails on a weekly basis, doing live shows like this on a weekly basis. Um, I did a, a, a challenge in my group. I still have it in, 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 in there right now. Um, I'm changing things up in a little bit, but I had a make some noise challenge. In the past, I've had a visibility challenge. And one of the things I tell people when they post a video is don't just post a video and say, hey, this is number one or number two, or you know, here's my Facebook Live video. It's like, like, what's a title? What is the title of this? What's the main point of your video? And then what's a two to three maybe sentence description of what they're going to receive or get if they watch this show? Like you've got to entice people. They see a 30-minute you know, video or, or even a 10-minute video or even a two-minute video. Why am I going to want to watch that, right? And, and even if they know you, even if they love you, why are they going to watch that, right? They've got to create a buying decision. So take the time. This is how you can start to practice this. You know, when you write emails, two, three emails, even just one email on a weekly basis and do a live show on a weekly basis, you would then have an opportunity to come up with a subject line for your email, write some copy in terms of your email, develop your style, do a live show, create an event for it, create a title for it, create a description of it, and invite people to it, right? So there's at least two different times in a week at a minimum you should be doing in your business to start practicing this stuff. And just start to find your style with it. And then when you have something like an Aweber, which is our email marketing platform, right, you can see the back end statistics, statistics. You can see who's opening it who's not opening it, who's clicking through on any links that you have there. That's a great way to test your subject lines. You know, in other words, when I see a big difference in terms of the amount of opens, there's a normal flux of maybe, let's say, 20 people or so, but there's some subject lines that I just know work or that I have a feeling like, oh, this is going to be a good one, and, and I'll see it result in the amount of opens. And there's not any more people on there than they were, let's say, last week. Yeah, there's some more, but not drastically that much more that's going to drive the open rate up, you know, 20% or something silly like that. It's the subject line, right? So start playing around with that and see how your audience responds, you know, with your live calls, things like that. Another great way to practice this is, is on meetup.com. Start your meetup up. When I work with my one-on-one -on -one clients, if they're doing some live stuff, that's one of the things I'll set. We can week one. We was like, all right, we come up with a headline for their business, who they help with what specifically. Great, you're gonna do face to face. Let's go to meetup.com. Start a meetup up. Let's use that headline and let's start to see who responds. I just had a client, you know, last week who who did a meetup and then no response. You know, so it was two weeks ago and then we changed it the week after. And next thing you know, they got 10, 15 people in their group. They did a meetup and they had a few people. Right, so. What's the difference? It's the, it's the subject line. It's the title. It's the headline of the group, right? That's and, and how we know if it works or not. I don't care if you hire the most expensive, best marketing guru in the world and, world and pay them millions of dollars, right? And they come up with a title. It doesn't mean it's going to work or not just because they did it. Ultimately, they've got to test it in the market and say, hey, here's the title. What type of results, what type of responses am I getting from that? So start playing with it, start messing with it, and start seeing results and start finding a trend for what works and maybe what doesn't work. And then you're going to not only be getting leads and growing your audience, but more importantly, hopefully, um, you'll be getting paid from it and you're, you're going to have more confidence in your marketing skills. And lastly, before I close off, um, if any of you are in a position where you know you require some help, like I said, I'm there for mentor coaching. Go to sellingcoaching.com. Go to the form at the, uh, at the bottom of the working page, fill that out, and we will connect. And let's create a conversation from there. 